Hello Hajra, Assalamu Alaikum, how are you feeling today? Wa Alaikum Assalam, thank you so much for introducing me, Jazakallah Khair. Shazad, I wanted to ask something from you. Sure, go ahead. Which is sort of a translation, so what do you call indicator in Urdu? Indicator is Shara. No, no, the, the indicator which is on the uh, cars. Yeah, you call it an Ishara? No, yeah, 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 no, yeah, 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 no, yeah. that's not. No, yeah, no, 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 that's not. I'm telling you the it. truth. I'm telling you the truth. No. You call it the Ishara? No, no, that's not. Yes. It. No, that's not. Okay, okay, what do you think? What do you think okay, you call it? Okay, call okay. It. okay. Because yeah, yeah, I learned yeah. it yesterday and it was such a difficult. So it is called Lapak Japak Ke Ishara Brai Dai and Bai. Obviously, that was on a lighter note. No, 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 that's true. But the true translation of it, ladies and gentlemen, happens to be an Ishara. So please don't go for that because I do know <laughs> that you know lapak japak dai or bai ka ishara is something which was uh, actually used in a poem which was on television I think a few years ago as well so please make sure that you don't <laughs> use it <laughs> in, in literal meaning as right. well but I think it was a great addition to my um, uh, you know my knowledge that lapak Ur japak Ur Urdu vocabulary yes but because it should I even, also but added it, the tube light to your no, knowledge you remember what you call tube light in Urdu if you yeah i don't i don't know i don't <laughs> that, know now lapak japak but i okay. i don't think that it should be lapak japak it should no, be jalbuj no no when you on the t do you remember the tube lights the rods yeah, that, that we used that, to that, have that, because yeah. they used to blink and then they yeah. used to finally so, okay so tell me since we are talking about tube light and bulbs and what now what do we call a tube light starter in urdu <laughs> what is a tube light starter i don't even you know, know that, that that round oh, device yeah, you know yeah, we yeah, put yeah, in yeah. it you know so what do we call so it so it's a part of the tube light so we call it lapak <laughs> chapak it danda braya khraje nur okay so don't try koi to chalane it wala, <laughs> koi chalane wala koi chalane but i think it was a it was a great question early okay. in the morning you know definitely lifted up my mood and for everybody okay. out there you know who might be thinking yaar kya bolte hain you know so for everybody who's out there ladies and gentlemen i still remember so next time don't say ishara because ishara has a lot of interpretations right ishara you know while you're in a car you can call it an ishara you know while if you're not in a car you shouldn't really be calling it an ishara but you know okay. while you are in the car because you're indicating it to somebody okay you know i'm going to go right yes. and then please make sure that if you have your right indicator on that you turn left you yes. know and if you have your turn uh, left indicator on you do not turn right you know so this is something which everybody needs to make sure and even signal is called an ishara so how many things other than you know the uh, uh, indicator on our cars how, how many things can you remember as ishara so so let's talk about that okay well. okay an ishara can be a sort of a sign something a divine sort of a sign right so yep. ishara uh, a divine ishara and then um, uh, so, so there are lots of other things so i can't even remember that uh, so so ishara can be a lot of things right just a pointing yeah. out something yeah. right or, or maybe a gu divine guidance in that sense samajhdar ke liye ishara hi kafi hota yeah 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 something like that and then the ishara indicator on the car which is lapak uh, chapak ke ishara <laughs> yeah, then, right, then on roads and streets and not yes. just that i think uh, you ishara know ishara can be the signal the traffic signal also right obviously, the bright green because yellow. you know i still remember when our guests used to come over and you know we were so energetic and we always wanted to have all of those samosas and pakoras yes. which were being served to the guests then i still remember my mother ka ishara yeah. you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so just with the eyes i was Don't able go to near the trolley, i was yeah. able to understand yeah. and then there are cheeky people as well but different ishara yeah 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 all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that please yes, make yes. sure that you don't do that if okay. you're a reasonable human being because people certainly do not like to be around such people who give these cheeky ishara's you know, <laughs> you know so you're clueless you're like okay Ooh. what what's happening yeah. but you know while while you <laughs> spoken about it and you've right. given us a wonderful start there's one more thing which i would want to kind okay. of put in front sure. of people before we move on to you know what's happening inside the country and on the globe yeah. there is a gentleman there is this picture which we want you to share early in the morning because certainly uh, you never know how many people might be facing a lot of difficulties so you know in one hand we see a diamond yes. um, a yes. woman's best friend yeah. and in the other hand man's we see too, a right? coal a man's best friend <laughs> and yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen so all we need to remember is that you know the coal did well under pressure and which is why it's a diamond now so i think that there's there are a lot of things in life which yes. actually will put you under pressure and you certainly have to do well that's true and the reason why i have this picture is that i wanted to ask you is that you know when we talk about pressure how many different 
elements of pressure can you identify in your life that okay you know every day there's this struggle and we certainly need to do well under that pressure i mean now, thank you so much for uh, i'm alluding through this topic of the pressure because nowadays i do find that uh, things are getting very easier for us because of the introduction of the technology mm. while at the same time we are feeling a lot of pressure to do uh, things right and then there's a lot of peer pressure there's a lot of academic pressure uh, then there are different pressures especially for the people who are working uh, in their offices so there are lots of psychological pressures and there are uh, emotional pressures and there are also so sort of physical pressures so every right? number nega pressure yes yes yeah <laughs> so something like that right and i think it's very important that we certainly discuss the topic of pressure in a different segment because that encapsulate a very wider concept True. and nowadays everyone is facing the brunt of that pressure so in order to discuss that and uh, and there's only one thing you know which i wanted to kind of add and contribute over here and that is that you know the sole reason why we sharing right. this picture with everybody out there is that what do you mean by doing well under pressure ladies and gentlemen yes. most of the time is what people do is that they give up on themselves yeah. yes. and it's because of the fact that they were lacking faith in Allah almighty yes. in the first place and then they were lacking patience yes. you know so what you really need to do is that you really need to make sure that whatever is there for you out there in this world yes. will be yours you know there's no other way that somebody else can take it so what Allah has made sure will be bestowed upon you will be bestowed upon you all you need to do is make sure that you do not leave any stone unturned yes. and then leave the rest to Allah almighty do not overthink because overthinking will not help it do yes. not give up on yourself and never give up on your dreams so that's the sole purpose and if you'll continue to do so every single day and have that faith and patience inshallah one day yes. you'll be uh, a diamond and people ho sakta hai dost na bole ke bhai tu bada hero hai lekin <laughs> you will be a diamond all right that's true that's true <laughs> so moving on to our top stories which is also the demand by our producer uh, so we lahore experienced a torrential rains uh, and uh, which broke the yesterday. record of 30 years uh, when the city received over 290 mm of the rain within a span of 10 hours resulting in a death of at least 7 people in alillah wa inna ilaihi rajiun the rain spell which started early in the morning paralyzed the city as all major roads and connecting streets are waterlogged making commuting impossible many vehicles broke down and stuck on the roads due to the knee deep water uh, in an update on his official twitter handle the interim chief minister confirmed that the rain's death toll has risen to 7 Uh, and he also added that city administration and all the officers and the staff of the water and sanitation authority lahore are fully mobilized to ensure the drainage of rain water rain water entered the houses in the low lying areas of shah jamal and tajpura while the electricity supply was also suspended due to massive rain uh, and we can see how rain has a huge huge impact especially on the breakdown of the entire system because the commuting is very difficult the roads are very clogged uh, but one good thing that emerge out of this entire very bad scenario is that i think in islamabad we have a very pleasant weather especially True. for the past 2 3 days right alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah and but med office has also predicted uh, urban flooding here in islamabad so be prepared and make sure um that you do not unnecessarily especially when it's a heavy rain go out right exactly and thank you so much uh, haja for picking up on this because th- that's the same question which i'm going to ask the administration of lahore or probably punjab as well but in this uh, particular or yes. probably when we are uh, specifically talking about lahore rains and how you know flooding has taken place over there yes. so for the all the um, uh, you know staff which has been mobilized now yes. why don't you think that you know that they were already making all of those checkups done that okay you know the whether the True. sewerage is fine or not whether there right. any clogging whether there's any blockage True. i think there's this trend of that you know once god forbid a calamity That's actually true. takes place only then you know that the entire administration will come out and will speak about you know how Uh, you know the entire staff yes. is being mobilized you know we do not need that that's we want true. all of those people to do their job every single day that's true. so that in order to make sure that no innocent lives are being lost because unfortunately and then there is this another clip of our former test cricketer wahab riaz which is being circulated yes, that okay yes, he's yes. being he's being washed uh, uh, splashing water onto motorbikes and what not yes. see um uh, obviously people really need to be careful when you know it's raining and there's water on the streets and roads that's one thing yes. but you know there's so many other things going on when you have such uh, calamity taking place in a city and we see or we witness urban flooding and it's already raining you know so yes. everybody's wet already so i don't know right. why people have to make it about other people who are already very famous to yaar ye dekhen ji inhone khayal nahi kiya baaj mein cheete marte chale gaye you know there's no other way there's water on the roads you know how do you think that the roads going to pass by or the cars going to pass by obviously there will be a little bit of splashing people really need to be careful sure. i stand by that but please make sure that you do not pick up on one gentleman you know he might be in an emergency there might be something wrong True. 
might have to rush and people were already and, wet and, and so please make sure that you know you decide yes, rationally yes and th thank you so much for hitting it out because this is also related to our topic which is and he was trolled badly on yeah. the social media right and we also talked about how trolling is a form um, that always restricts and hinders the freedom of expression because you cannot positively discuss on an entire issue uh, because you are very much involved in diffusing the entire pressure <laughs> into one particular individual True. out there right so how to make sure that our youth is kept away from all of that negative propaganda, trolling, all of that negativity which social media has generated because once it was hailed as a very democratic platform that will give voice to a lot of people. But now we see that how it is often hijacked by few trollers. Uh, an entire positivity is being wiped out by those negative comments. So to talk more about how to make sure that our youth is guided and how to protect yourself from all of these negative comments. That's true. Apne that's true. That's true. So we are very glad that we have been joined by a wonderful motivational speaker who often graced our sets and whenever he speaks, um, he speaks very finely yeah. and he speaks wisdom. So we are very glad that we have been joined by uh, Colonel Muhammad Akmal Khan. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for coming to our show. Wa Sir, it's always wonderful to have you on our show and let me tell you very honestly that you look amazing today and you look at least five years younger than whatever your age is. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what you've been doing, whether you've been dieting or whether it's the Bakra Eid meat as well or the barbecue, <laughs> but you look fantastic and it's always wonderful to be around you because you know whenever we have uh, as kids you know or as children whenever we have posed a question to you you've always made sure that we understand that language which actually comes out of your mouth so that's the best part so to get started with said you know the topic is very simple these days there's a lot of trolling there's a lot of True. memes being made for people and a lot of people's mental health is being disturbed and the stats exactly. and the research says that how do you think that we can have this cult, this culture over here where everybody, where for example, nobody's gossiping, where nobody's saying anything bad about anybody, rather they're focusing on their work, yes. you know, and these are the morals, these are the characteristics of any personality yes. which are being loved world over. Why do you think that we lack that at times, you know, as kids, as children? Thank you very much. A very interesting topic. And at the same time, uh, uh, let, let me uh, acknowledge the high energy of uh, you, uh, you both, uh, both of you, mashallah, <laughs> that has uh, really energized me. Thank you, because sir. Because once I uh, was driving down, uh, there were uh, uh, the road blockages were all from uh, this place to my uh, home, so it took uh, almost one and a half hour to reach here. Okay. Uh, which otherwise could have been 20 minutes. Would you like to have a cup of coffee? I would love Farah, please get I us one cup of coffee for our guest. Thank you. Uh, we, we see the social media now uh, affecting our lives in all dimensions. Uh, I, I, I was just once driving down was in the thought process, I thought. This is not just a social... Uh, social media, it is a super, ultra super social activity which is taking place. True. Because uh, uh, the globe has squeezed. That's true. And the other cultures are affecting our, our, our culture. Our identity too. Therefore, uh, we have to devise now solutions. We know the problem. True. We know this is a problem. True. So now, let's think of some solutions about what to do about this and people are definitely thinking about it but to me as an as a uh, as, as a uh, as a life coach as a as, as a mentor i think that uh, the responsibilities lies on us true the educators that's true but there are very few no yes we have to educate and make our generation aware of these these evils the evil and good and bad would exist alongside Parallel. this is a nature that's true. true and it is our responsibility to make uh, our uh, uh, generation prudent about what is happening around them a couple of uh, years ago uh, i was visiting one of my eye specialists for my eyes and there I saw 12, 13, 6 to 7 years old boys and girls. At the eye specialist? At eye specialist. Social media. It is about 2 years. Yes. 
and I asked suddenly, what these children are doing over here? Right. And they, uh, one of them said, they have gone blind. Oh my blind? God. What kind of blindness they have undergone? Since their childhood, since their birth, they are seeing just not beyond this place. So their vision has not developed beyond this. But, but then, sir, how do you, I mean, de-hyphenate that thing from our lives? Because our entire lives hinges around social media, uh, around mobiles, gadgets, iPads, mm. whatnot, right? And it's not just the kids are watching. I think the elders are watching, and so are our grandparents' generation, <laughs> who are also hooked to that, right? And I, I think it's also a source of uh, empowerment for a lot of people because people are earning money on that. It is a source of job for them, a source of income from them. Definitely. So when it has become a, such an important fabric of our society how to uh, de-entangle ourselves from there because I see it's very difficult we also. cannot and, we and cannot. sir in addition to that you know so I've seen people because you know people who are content creators themselves they're not watching it you know but so what they're doing is that they're creating content they're busy with it and they take it as work and right after they have they're done creating their content they do something other than that you know other than watching a screen because they're not they certainly do not want to do it because they've been in front of the screen so I've seen this that you know people who want to waste their most of the time, what they do is that they will watch reels and Instagram videos and whatnot. Yes. But people who certainly, you know, have no idea about it, what other people are doing and how they're making money, what they're doing is that they create this content and then they, you know, they leave the rest and then they go outside and they enjoy the money that they have made for their family. So how would you allude to that as well? Because imagine that there are smart people out there and there are people who are procrastinating, people who are lazy and people who are just taking, uh, you know, it, it likely that, okay, you know, whatever time you're wasting, there's not a problem. Exactly. Now, uh, uh, very pertinent thing. The generation which is being affected badly is is the youth. True. To me, what what kind of change they can bring about in me? But my my children are being uh, contaminated. True. And very badly. And to some extent, I uh, 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 again. Uh, in few uh, of the uh, videos or clips I, uh, I saw, yes. the history of Pakistan is being contaminated with such, such things which is creating such a bad effect on our youth. Exactly. And which is why, you know, I, I noted it down, you know, so that we, can t we could talk about it. So imagine that, you know, that social media most of the time for everybody who's out there is used. Now, uh, earlier it was a tool where people would kind of wish birthdays, post pictures yes. and like yes, it and whatnot. Yes, yes. But now it has become a very different ball game. So imagine there will be political parties who will use to polarize and, you know, build up their own narrative. That's number true. one, That's true. there will be marketeers, you know, who would want to sell anything to you, you know, to, to get your money out of your wallet. Then there's education sector who's telling you most of the time on social media that whatever school you're going to is not a good school and the uh, and the and the education services we provide is the best education service then there are lifestyle coaches who yeah. tell you that you really need to be rich and be in amongst the one percent of the total population then they are motivational speakers you yes. know who come up you know who might not have done anything in their life but they'll tell you that okay you know we are very successful we are earning millions of dollars and you can enroll in our course and then you can become a millionaire so imagine all what i see on social media these days is a narrative building polarization, disparity amongst different statuses of the society. Yes. How do you think that we get rid of that? And we certainly need to make our audiences more aware of it. We cannot get rid of this. Yeah. That's true. This is, this is reality. This is, it. Of, this is, this is the reality we, of our times. We true. need to learn to live with it, right? We are to live with this. Yes. With our style. That's true. Get with our get. culture, with our norms. And that what we have to teach to our uh, younger generation. That's true. B by just closing eyes that you are now uh, away from <laughs> this. No, sir, this doesn't happen. True. So the, the nature has to be followed in that way. Exactly. The flower and the thorn both are co coexisting. It is you who has to decide that my, my, uh, how, how my child is going to uh, tackle with to this. That, yes. Right. And also, like we talked about, we need to learn to live with it. Right. So social media, I always 
say that and this is my belief that is a very mediocre medium uh, so all that you find is people are engaged in ill wishes they are there's a lot of trolling ye that you talk about yes. yes. there are a lot of sensationalist videos on the social media and people will say you know you need to click on the link to watch such sort of videos and i think we were having <laughs> this discussion yes, yes uh, on there and if you want to intellectually or more open mindedly engage with someone on the social media so uh, there's a possibility a very fine possibility that you will be trolled to so i don't engage that much vigorously with the social media because but podcasts I find are good yeah are you because i mean there's good content there but i mean it's your choice how do you engage with that right so imagine but, on 22nd of july there's this um, person from pakistan who actually sir uploaded a video on youtube saying that you know that a uh, uh, foreign body is actually going to hit our planet and you know yeah. we might not even survive after 22nd of july and at the end of the video he says please subscribe my channel so imagine if, the, if there's not going to be any planet left out there what do you think people will have to do to subscribe you i think this is what we were talking about <coughs> all of this trolling this is all of this fake news misinformation disinformation yeah. which is out there and which brings us to very important topic how to tackle this misinformation disinformation and fake news which can turn into propaganda right yeah and and there's there's a proper way of kind of addressing it so now okay. sir the question becomes I'll I'll try to be wise with that. Now the question is that imagine that social media can actually be used by anybody That's from true. age one till fifty five, sixty, seventy, hundred, hundred and fifty, whether they went to school or not, whether they know the I language or not. And so this age. tool can be used by anyone and everyone. Absolutely. And that's the problem. Absolutely. It's not a problem, it's a strength. <laughs> and professionals are not engaged. I think at my mother, it's strength. My yes. mother, she is teaching this to my grandson. Yeah. <laughs> right. Masha. For daddy. Yeah. Right. How can you uh, 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 go and tell her that what are you doing, mother? True. Right, right. And and uh, though we made the the the, the new young uh, parents, we made them cognizant that they must, that the uh, uh, the child must not be exposed to the uh, radiation, and it, it, it's a growing time. Right. And the mother and the, uh, my wife, they all uh, were cognizant that it, how can you stop my mother? That's true. That's <laughs> yeah, true. that's true. That's so we have to live with this. They're minded a lot. No, right. but living with this is fine. What I'm trying to ask is that now imagine that somebody who's never been to school and he starts to create content. Yes. That's good. That you know, and it should be taken as an advantage. Yes. But imagine that without any research, without knowing whether whatever he or she is sharing on internet is true or not, a lot of people will be inspired by those videos and that content. And that's something which I take as a weapon of mass destruction. That imagine somebody who never knew anything yes. is out there te trying to teach you. And this is how the fake news spreads, and I think uh, there was this research which actually validated that uh, if you put a rebuttal to that fake news, it does not sp uh, spread so virally as the fake news does, True. right? So how to protect ourselves from that virality element of the social media, with through which things or the I mean information becomes so much viral that it's very difficult yeah. to uh, ab, disrupt ab, ab, that ab, 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 ab. transmission. Yeah. The divine uh, uh, directive and the divine uh, uh, call is very clear on this. Taki kar liya karo. That's true. True. But people don't do that. Even if you know, it, it actually speaks about even if you're going shopping, that you really need to kind of check the rates from three other shops. So why do you that's mind that sunna. a lot? That's the sunna. That's the sunna. Women do that a lot. Why do you mind Wom it? Then? No, what women do is that they go to every shop. They know that they don't go to buy anything. They oh, actually make true. the worker take out each and every cloth in their shop and then tell them, okay, bhai, mujhe me nahi aara. <laughs> that's, that's unfair. That's not true. That's, <laughs> that's not true. unfair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's a different subject. Please, okay. sir. Uh, 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 I would uh, uh, rather uh, uh, go with this uh, idea that we should uh, uh, evolve our uh, uh, culture now in, a, in that way where uh, uh, a great grand uh, 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 mother is uh, guiding the uh, newborn uh, so that how to idea. use this True. and uh, how to keep uh, 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 him or her busy and committed. So. Uh, uh, Living with this would uh, again, uh, you have to identify at 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 your household level, and then at your school level that you have to make our, our children cognizant of this. That's true. With a deliberate effort. That's true. And not hearsay and cut paste. True, That's true, true. true. That's true. And that requires a lot of research and uh, unfortunately we are not that much invested in the research so it's high time 
that we do get involved in the research and I think uh, parents and teachers should make an effort in order to make sure that uh, we need to invest ourselves into integrating the how to educate social media. So there should be a lot of social media literacy in our syllabus. Exactly. Um, and we need to teach our children yeah. the how to keep away from all of that and, content. And, and not just that, you know, so, but sir, thank you so much for being thank with us. So it was lovely to be in conversation thank with you. You, so you drove uh, all the way, you know, from so far. We were glad that we were able to share a cup of coffee with you as thank well. Thank you very much. But there's one thing, you know, before we head out towards a short break, because I have three little princesses at my home, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Everybody's got a device. Alhamdulillah for that too as well. <laughs> That's but true. we need to take it uh, as an advantage for them. So imagine yes. what happens is in our household, I've made sure and my wife has made sure that, you know, that the right. screen time is limited. So, you okay. know, before sleeping, probably 30 minutes, 40 minutes and somewhere during the day. Okay. But what I do deliberately where uh, Kanan Saab actually mentioned and it was he was very rightful. What I do is that I made sure that I indulge them in a physical activity. So okay. what I would do is an alternative. that you know, yes, yeah, yeah, an alternative. And that is that, you know, so one day I'll go, you know, buy those plastic bats and balls. Okay. You know, one day there's the pool outside, you know, so play everybody's room, in yeah. it, you know, so everybody's playing. Then there's a particular dedicated playroom. Even if it's not, you know, you can certainly bring them in. There's there's sets of Legos out there. Right. You know, I will have to sit down with them. I think that the fault lies with the parents when they're certainly not yes. ready to sit down with them and are on devices themselves and do not want the kids to be on the devices. That's I think that's something which the kid will never learn. The kid will only learn only if you will show it by an example, not yes. by your words only. So please make sure that you believe in action, not words. We're heading out towards a short break. Don't go anywhere because when you come back, we have another inspiring figure to interview. So please make sure that you stay tuned. Good morning. Welcome back and we were having a very interesting conversation before going on to the break and now we have a very interesting conversation lined up which relates to the climate change, sovereign debt and neoliberal policies uh, and that too with someone who has lots of feathers to his cap. Mm. Uh, so United Nations platform is always there in which people go, people talk and then there um, that at all the talk converts into the actions, right? But there are times when that talk does not convert into the actions. Uh, but it's very important to have your voice represented at the global level, especially coming from the global south with the countries are poorer and they do not have that mm. much of a say um, in the international system. Uh, so, uh, uh, Shazad, we were talking about the climate change, about yes. the sovereign debt and Pakistani state has a very uh, in impressive stance on that. So, for example, our United Nations and all of these uh, money lenders like IMF, like all of these ADB, Asian Development Bank, um, they are modeled on the platform after they emerge after the World War II, okay, right? Yes. And they reflect the realities of the World War II and certainly in 21st century things have changed Exactly like the United Nations, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, and we have a very uh, intrusive sort of a reality which is a very sharp reality called climate change, True. right? Uh, and uh, last year Pakistan suffered 40 billion dollars of losses because of the climate change, because of the flood uh, entire system was jammed because of such a huge and a massive level of a flooding. Um, so all of these uh, international monetary fund and all of these lenders, they need to change their way of system uh, because their system do not reflect the realities of the climate change. Rather, they reflect the realities of World War II, which was an event that was held in the last century, right? The entire century has changed and there needs to be conversation surrounding it. So for example, country like Pakistan, which has a minimal say in the climate climate change is suffering the huge brunt um, because of the climate change policies, right? Because of the climate change realities. Uh, in order to have such sort of discussions, we are very glad that we have been joined uh, by someone who happens to be the advisor to the Chancellor of the Greenwich University at Karachi, uh, Ali Jalani. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for coming to our show. Assalamu alaikum ji, I hope I'm audible. 
Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sali, it's, a, it's an honor, Alhamdulillah, for us to, you yes. know, kind of interview you. And Alhamdulillah, you've been honored uh, that you will be actually, in fact, you've been selected as a regional speaker to represent Asia and the Pacific at the high level political forum as well. And it's wonderful to see Pakistan is doing wonderfully well. Yes. But the topics uh, will certainly be around climate change, neoliberal policies, strangulating countries like Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Philippines, and Fiji. First things first, you know, I would want you to kind of let everybody know because we go out in 47 different countries. You have a long bio over here. Yes. Uh, it's in front of us. We would want you to kind of share your bio and your profile with people first yes. and then we'll talk about all of this and what are you going to talk about and how it's going to have an impact. Please go ahead. Gee, thank you very much. Uh, I basically represent a policy think, policy think tank. Uh, it's called Karachi Research Chair, uh, striving for democratization of state and society in Pakistan. Uh, we also are part of a regional network, which uh, is the Asia-Pacific Regional CSO's Engagement Mechanism. Uh, it's a network of about 650 organizations from around 43 countries in Asia and the Pacific. So, the uh, advocacy group here, which basically sets the narrative on uh, development-related issues. Ali, I'm really sorry yeah. I have to interject, but since we are an English channel, so can you speak in English? So we wanted to reach a broader audience, especially uh, people who are living sure, abroad. Sure, yeah. Thank you. Go My on. apologies for that. Yeah, sure. I, I would be more comfortable doing that. Okay, go <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Wonderful. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I basically represent a policy uh, think tank uh, called Karachi Research Chair, yeah? and uh, we are also a part of a regional mechanism uh, from around 43 countries in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, this network is called Asian Pacific CSOs Engagement Mechanism, and it has about 650 organizations. So I lead the advocacy group of uh, APRSM, uh, which basically sort of like sets the narrative uh, on, on development-related issues and our engagement with the United Nations. Uh, as far as this particular event is concerned, uh, it's called the High Level Political Forum of the UN's uh, General Assembly, featuring over 193 uh, member, state, member states. Yes. And uh, the main uh, discussion that we have there is around sustainable development goals, yes. yep. uh, 17 of them, and you know the entire policy landscape across different countries who are member states of the UN uh, is compliant with this uh, global development framework. Right. Uh, as far as my engagement is concerned, uh, for this year, so they always have uh, this MGS official session. Uh, I will be speaking uh, during that session on July 14th. Uh, as a regional speaker representing the entire Asian and the Pacific region, we also have other speakers coming from Africa, Latin America, and Europe, respectively. Uh, so some of the issues that I have to cover, uh, first thing first is the sovereign debt issue. Uh, you must be familiar with what's going on with the IMF deal as far as Pakistan is concerned. Yes. Um, yes. And I mean, similarly, uh, there's been a similar situation uh, in, in terms of economic crises uh, across uh, Sri Lanka, Philippines, uh, Maldives, Fiji. Uh, so I will be, uh, you know, yeah. So I'll be representing all of those countries' perspectives there. Uh, uh, during during the conversations uh, during that session as well as throughout the HLPF. Uh, something that I heard earlier you were talking about also uh, in, in terms of sovereign debt issues, you see, uh, 40 out of 43 countries, uh, according to our analysis, uh, suffered unprecedented debt to GDP ratios during COVID-19 mm -hmm. because of the economic downturns uh, enforced by the, by the pandemic. However, uh, within the same period, uh, the International Monetary Fund uh, negotiated, uh, I think, 91 loans, 76 of which pushed for further belt tightening measures. Now, that means cuts to public spending in health, public spending in education, and public spending in uh, social uh, protection floors, and so on and so forth. So that actually means that there was no lesson learned uh, from such a massive, catastrophic you know, uh, situation around the world. And uh, yeah. the same policy of business as usual was kind of followed, right? So we are there to challenge those kind of narratives and policies as far as uh, the likes of the IMF and World Trade Organization. But, but, yeah. but Ali, I'm so sorry I have to interject here, but we already see that there is a massive narrative, especially when we talk about the climate change. Already on the front, there are a lot of counter arguments that are coming from the uh, global south, from the country like Pakistan. So we see there was a very impressive representation of Pakistani leadership at Sharm el-Sheikh conference at the COP. 
COP conference and back in few days ago in the France where our Prime Minister went out there. So there is a counter narrative which has been developing, which has been given by the Global South, but we don't see any action uh, in terms of Global not curbing all of those emissions, curbing all of those uh, massive industrialization which is leading to the problem in the first place, right? And when we talk about sustainable development, there is no sustainable development in the West. So how do you make sure that all of these conversations is catapulted into a concrete actions? Yes, we talked about loss and damage fund, loss and damage compensation fund, uh, but I mean at the ground, the conversation never turned into very um, sustainable actions. So how do you challenge this in the United Nations platform? And of course, there is a lot of criticism on the United Nations that um, it's a forum just for the talking, right? Because actions are not yeah. taken concretely. So there. it has always been very intangible. Yes. Yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned and, and our narrative is concerned, we see that, the, you know, the terms of discussion around development have to be democratized and, and for good. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be seen as an act of benevolence by Global North, uh, the rich countries club, uh, for towards, you know, the, the poor countries. So as far as those terms of discussion are concerned, those terms of engagement around global development are concerned, they, they are supposed to sort of like, you know, uh, change for better. And by that, I mean, for instance, you know, one of the issues that I'll be covering there is the official development assistance, uh, which mainly is the key factor that does not translate into financial resources for, for the global countries in the South. Uh, so only, uh, for instance, you know, we have uh, in the Development Assistance Committee over 30 countries as members and only six of them uh, pay only 0.75% of gross, uh, their gross national income as part of the official development assistance, right? And which is why when you don't have the finances, which is called the means of implementation, the goal 17, uh, then it's very difficult to sort of like, you know, mobilize uh, change on the ground or to substantiate any kind of, uh, you know, uh, efforts in terms of advancing development outcomes, uh, especially across the poor countries around the world. True. Uh, specifically on the issue of climate change, uh, I think Global South has to substantiate its uh, claim also in line with the with the shifting narrative that we are trying to pose that it's not an act of benevolence, like I said, it's an act of historical responsibility. It's the multinational corporations from the global north, from the rich countries, who have been mainly responsible for the climate degradation across global south. And you will see those patterns even continuing today. So we start need to uh, sort of not just challenging it, but also based on the Paris Agreement's principle of common, uh, common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities, we need to come up with concretized, uh, you know, solidarities and plans in terms of our uh, articulation of demands as to what exactly do we need when we say loss and damages fund. What exactly, what exactly do we need when we say uh, technical and technological support that, that the developing countries need? And, you know, we will be definitely uh, challenging some of those uh, perspectives. And just to uh, add one more issue to that, we are all familiar with what happened in uh, Recodic, uh, which was basically a consequence of a very invasive uh, trade agreement uh, that, is, that is prevalent in the World Trade Organization's regime. So we will also be challenging that and I will be using that opportunity being a Pakistani representing the region uh, to cite that Funny, case how, as, how, as uh, when, when a you talk, When you talk about substantiating with the evidence, what do you mean by that? Because there are already a lot of researches which are also pointing out that how multinational corporations or the global north is responsible for all of this mess, uh, which we call climate change in the first place, mm. right? So they're all already their yeah. research is there. There's already evidence there, but how to convert that into an action is a question mark, right? And they do not even want to comply to that. And not yes. just that, you know, so you'll be speaking at the United, <coughs> uh, United Nations General yes. Assembly session in New York, and you're responsible for all of those developing countries. And to speak about SDGs, imagine that the one thing which is not sustainable in all of these or amongst all of these countries, countries is their economy. So That's how true. do you think yeah. that we'll be able to build up a narrative where, you know, that this responsible North we were talking about will be able to take up that responsibility and will contribute towards the development. Imagine that we have faced $40 billion of losses even in floods last year as well. Yes. So I think that things will yeah. change in near future. And do you think that you talking over there, representing so many other countries of such sort where we label them as developing countries will bring about a change? And do you think that this is the way forward? Uh, I'll, I'll uh, give you two examples on this in response to that. Uh, the, the first is, uh, you know, as far as the leadership at the multilateral level is concerned, that is definitely in question, like you said also. 
Uh, one example is that during the very uh, you know middle of the pandemic in 2021, I was following a consultation happening in Geneva, which was which was the ministerial conference of the WTO, and the General Assembly sent a recommendation to WTO's ministerial conference to uh, waive the trade-related intellectual property stipulations. In simple words, that would mean that the countries like Pakistan and others could be transferred the technology so that they could also develop the quality of vaccine like Pfizer, for instance, right? Okay. But despite such a pandemic, uh, despite over 76% of the global population not having a single dose of vaccine, the demand was not, uh, you know, uh, so we, we couldn't substantiate, you know, any action, any considerable action that would have had some value for the developing countries, right? So the leadership at the multilateral level is definitely in question. Uh, on the question of research, the other example that I want to give you is, so in, in one year, uh, the official development assistance which all the rich countries give to the poor countries, the highest amount that we've had is $185 billion in 2021. Okay. But according to some of my colleagues' research, in the same uh, period, we also see that over $2.1 trillion were taken out from developing countries yes. Uh, yes. by the rich countries' multinational corporations through tax evasions, profit shifting, asset stealth, and you know some other invasive instruments like that, including the investor state dispute settlement over which Pakistan was slapped with a five billion dollars, uh, you know, fine uh, during the Rikodik case. So the narrative we are pushing there is for the United Nations to systematically track these kind of indicators, where where if those two point one trillion dollars are saved in those poor countries, we probably don't even need development aid from the rich countries, That's true. right? Provided if the legal infrastructure is strengthened at the regional as well as global level, and those multinational corporations are held to account for the actions that they do in poorer countries, right. abusing their weak legal infrastructure. Right. So does that direct, so those, direct those us towards... the systemic issues that we need to resolve. So, Mr. Sorry. Ali, does it direct us towards incompetence, lead, uh, incompetent leadership over here within our country as well? Of course. Of course, because you see, yes. uh, we do have to have uh, the leadership that is able to articulate its demands with clarity and conviction at the international stage to be able to mobilize the international community and probably lead the voices as well. Right, right. One last question, Ari, because we have to uh, wrap it up, which is how can we reform the international monetary uh, lending platforms? Because we have seen that they've often used as a political tool uh, to keep the uh, global south subjugated. So, for example, we can take the case of uh, Pakistan being in a for such a long time in a grey list, despite the fact that we complied with all of the points. Uh, but still, we were kept in a grey list because of the this and that and small things um, as compared to a lot of other countries which were actually not even complied complying with that. There was a lot of money laundering going on inside their states, inside their nations, but there was no response at that, right? So how can we uh, make sure that there is no political tool which is being used to stab the global south or the countries like Pakistan in the first place? And that calls for a reforms, right, in the first place. Yeah. Uh, as far as the multilateral level is concerned, I mean, I, I, I will say three things here. Number one, to depoliticize. Like you said, there's a lot of political influence going in that's apparently true. very neutral international development agencies. You will see a lot of politics going. Even with our current deal, as far as that is concerned, that's there's a lot of uh, stuff going. And even in FATF, for instance, Pakistan suffered a lot of consequences because of the true. politics happening at the back, right? That's so uh, we, we need to, number one, depoliticize those processes. Number two, uh, we need to democratize those processes. And, and by that, I mean the increasing corporatocratization of our multilateral processes is very much business as usual, which has led us to where we are, that we couldn't even withstand as a global community a single uh, you know, incident like COVID-19. And uh, you know, the research, the upcoming research shows us the, the, that we have already uh, you know, walked into a triple planetary crisis as far as uh, climate change is concerned, and, and then other, other several issues as well. So it, it requires strong leadership at the multilateral level Right. Uh, and I think the, the only way to push it forward is uh, voices, solidarities coming from the global south, not just from the civil society, but also from the intergovernmental level. And, and perhaps then uh, we can think about democratizing the terms of engagement around uh, you know, sustainable development or uh, whatever the situation is. Because uh, just to finish uh, quickly, 
As far as the Asia Pacific region is concerned, our research shows that we will not be in a position to achieve the sustainable development goals, which was supposed to be by 2030. We won't be able to achieve them before 2065. Right. And I yeah. can assure you, the situation is similar for the other regions around the world as well. Right. So, Thank which you. is Thank why the so UN has, has a lot to think and act. Th thank, thank you so you much, Ali, but, but we're running short on time and we wish you best of luck for the middle yes. of July where you'll be speaking at the United Nations General Assembly session in New York. And for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, may it be COVID, record day, may it be the climate change. I think that, you know, when we speak of the current government, obviously Ms. Sherry Rahman has been applauded of what she has done, you know, in terms of climate change yes. for Pakistan. And where we spoke of incompetence with the leadership, I think yes. we really need to go back in time and check for all of those people who were at the helm of affairs and weren't able to do well for Pakistan. And I think it's an eye-opener for everybody out there and it's a it's a moment of realization so let's be more rational so that we can take those decisions where the Pakistan is going to progress rather than any other individual and that's why we firmly believe in the government and the actions which have been taken by the government or the current government to be very honest so until next time it's a goodbye Allah Hafiz good morning, good morning.